This Salisbury steak in Montana, you enjoy it. Never know which meal will be your last. What did you, you have? have? My last meal? Yeah. A single pretzel. Yeah, this is what I love about meal? this group. We've taken death and we've turned it upside down and really made a positive. It's actually an opportunity like, for an what, awesome meal. What could I eat? You want me to drive? I drive. When you're in the truck with Taylor acting, does he talk to you like Taylor or does he talk to you like Travis? The lines are really blurry. <laughs> <laughs> this is some, I'm fascinated with the, this. The Taylor Jefferson relationship is not so different from the Travis Jimmy relationship in that I know my place and it is uh, to speak when spoken to. Because sometimes there's not that many people around, right, in the truck. Like, when we're on set and there's, like, 200 people in Cowboy yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a show. That's funny. When it was just me and Taylor alone in the truck, he told me that I was his favorite. You're, now you're just projecting lies. Yeah, that's true. It, if, if anything, the opposite. It's, it's, it's like, hey, buddy, now that no one's around, I can tell you, uh, I'm not a big fan, pal. What are you saying? Roadhouse is the best movie ever made? Ever fucking made. Ever. Travis is like a hilarious character, and the fact that Taylor wrote Travis for himself, I think, is also so funny. Like it's such a yeah, yeah. it's such a funny kind of joke within a joke for him to write that stuff for himself. Man, I wish them all to come back in style, don't you? Up until like two weeks ago, I had I had ten months worth of hair, and there were times where I would kind of pull it back on top and, and make it look short on the sides, and then do the and I would do, I would rock them all in. Speaking of hair. Next truck stop we find, you need to shave all this shit off. You look fucking homeless. I had a mullet when I was a kid. My mom, I looked back at family photos of us when we were young, and my mom had awesome hair, and I had terrible hair. And that seems deeply unfair because she clearly knew what good hair looked like. You know what I mean? Because she knew. Do you think that that's one of the reasons why you project so much now? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's growing on you. She's not growing on me. <laughs> Okay, she has like a couple of moves and stuff. Okay, let's imagine somewhere down the line, Colby and Teeter maybe move in together. So let's break down some of these household tasks and see who's going to do what. Teeter or Colby, who does the cooking? Well, obviously Teeter. Dinner's on mouse ready. You talk about cooking a lot. I haven't seen any. I know, you talk a big game. It's like quinoa this, couscous Col that. Colby's really a, a night cooker. He likes to do it when the lights are out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. That sounds safe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait till, the, till it's dark to make everything burn you. kind of how he is. Burn you. Um, okay, Teeter and Colby, who's in charge of the laundry? Let's get naked! I think Colby. Colby's really yeah. big on, uh, you know, he likes the certain fabrics. You have the sensitive his, side. You're taking yeah, care of things that sensitive skin. she might not be not care interested about. So who would stock the fridge with beer? Is that, is that also one of your duties? You want some courage? Fuck yeah. No, that's her. I, Colby's not a giant beer drinker. He's like a hard seltzer. Guy. Yeah, yeah, Colby yeah. really actually drinks Cab. Oh yeah, he's, oh, a, big, he's a big, guy. he's a big, no Cabernet Sauvignon. That's a red wine. Mm -hmm. Who hands out the candy to the trick or treaters uh, on Halloween who make it to the bunkhouse? Hey, you look like a fuck motherfucking chicken. I mean, I have, we haven't been together long enough to really establish what that would be. He's like afraid to commit that they're gonna make it to Halloween. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah, once I just, you get into the like the fall holidays, you have to go all the way through. To, I know, because where are you going Valentine's for Christmas? Day. Where are you going for New, New Year's? Year's and Valentine's. So yeah, I understand why this is a tough, yeah, this a is tough sell for you. And I just don't know what that looks like yet. We're not gonna do it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Who takes out the trash? Teeter takes the trash out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who mows the lawn? Probably Teeter. Who chases out the rats living in the attic? I didn't know we had an attic. But if we did, at the top of the barn, where all the cats are. Oh, there's so many cats. Oh, out there. there are a lot of there cats. There are so Awkward many. Cats. Yeah, it's kind of too many. Colby's not really big with rodents. Mm. Yeah, so he doesn't I'd really say, like. It's very dirty. It might be teeter, and then they might end up in a stew. <laughs> Lil some bitch stew. It's all the little some bitches. No, I'm good. Imagine this. I want to imagine. Let me paint a picture for you. Okay. It's you and Kevin Costner. You're in the hot springs. I'm out. You're you know you don't have you're you're new. You just what? like like Greco Roman. Why are we nude? I don't know because do cowboys have bathing suits? But just your you don't underwear. wear your you don't wear your swimsuit under your chaps just in case but you come under... upon a hot spring. <laughs> your underwear. Really? Then your underwear is gonna be wet all day. Under and like on the saddle, that's gonna be. Well, chafed I won't put city. my underwear back on. Cowboys don't wear. At underwear. At that point, you'll switch to a no, no underwear, underwear situation. situation. Exactly. Okay. So we're learning a lot right now. Yeah, but I'm not gonna be naked in any 
river with Kevin Costner. You know? What if yeah. it was really healing mud and like good for the soul? I'll do it by myself. If I looked like Luke, 100% I'm popping the top off, no problem. Popping the top off is fine. I'm popping pop the bottom like off Luke, is another thing. I'm popping it all off. I if I look like Luke... I just don't see the point. I want you to find another job. I'm 0 for 3 with assistance anyway. Turns out working for me is pretty fucking dangerous. Beth has a hard time keeping good work on hand because they all get killed. A box within a box. So we are going to ask you a series of questions, and you're going to tell us whether or not it's more or less deadly than being Beth's assistant. Stealing Lloyd's girlfriend or being Beth's assistant. Well, less deadly, because we have we have footage. Yeah, less deadly, barely. Well, yeah, which, because he's certainly- Knife in the chest. He <laughs> attempted murder. Yeah. I would say you're, you're pretty much on par. Less. Yeah, approximately as deadly. I'll go, like, 51%. I would actually go to work for Beth before I would take Lloyd's girlfriend. At this point, you know, it can't happen three times, right? Oh, shit. Going fishing yeah. with Rourke or being Beth's assistant? Being Beth's assistant. Is, okay, so still Beth's assistant is more deadly, more deadly than going yeah. fishing with Rourke. Yeah. Right, I mean, how often does someone throw a snake, a snake at you from a lunch pail? Well, give me a break. <laughs> how many snakes could he possibly have? Rodeoing or being Beth's assistant? You have unique knowledge of this. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy's broken his back twice, Rodeo. You tried to get killed twice. But he has only been exploded almost once. Jesus, Jimmy, you okay? In the same vein, breaking a stallion or being Beth's assistant? Casey breaks those stallions. It's kind of a Casey move. He's fine. Casey's yeah, still walking around. Like okay, so, so far, Beth's body count is, is, is number one. I need my assistants to put all their efforts into not being pussies. What is more dangerous, jacking off a horse or being Beth's assistant? The only dangerous thing about jacking off a horse is you might fall in love. That's pretty good. You two are fucking crazy, you know that? Like bananas in the brain. I think it's just fun when you're kind of outside, everyone is there, and it's just kind of spitballing and stepping over each other's lines. And with having, you know, Kat on set, you know, her kind of getting an opportunity to kind of see what that is, kind of takes you back to the old times. There's turtles that live 250 years. Your jokes are over. Are you two a couple? <laughs> Even like, Bingham was there and he was in a good mood. How the fuck did you hurt your knee roping the steer? I didn't hurt roping the steer. I heard it fucking your mother the other night. Somebody had a couple of beers. beers yeah, we're just... And it was like, it's okay, just for right now. Right. Which obviously is the bridge between the next series of destructive events that are gonna be. <laughs> Anytime you're feeling good, that's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. You're going back to Texas, ain't you? It's such a sort of honor to work with Forey, because Forey has lived this life for so long. He's an incredible actor, but he's also like an incredible cowboy. And, and Forey's approval, I, Jeff, am always looking for Forey's approval. I'm always sort of asking Forey, hey man, did you see anything there I could work on? Or hey, did I get this right? So getting Forey's approval in a, in a scene like that is really huge for me too. I might make a cowboy yet. Hell, Jimmy, you're a cowboy already. He's fucking good. He's done this before. My first time. Carter plays poker with us. Um, yeah, he gets the gist of it. He he's, didn't know he's poker, more interested though. in like magic tricks and making cards disappear in knives yeah, than, like than I think little he Jimmy. is. A little he, he really little is. Jeff. He's little a protege. Yeah, he's me, but better and cuter. Triple it. Oh, so you guys play cards with him, but he cleans you out. Little no. card shark, motherfucking kid. Well, yeah, it was I written mean, that way. Yeah, it's in the script. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it was written. That was the way that it was written. He was not bashful about talking shit, though, too. Jen, really, like, Jen was there, it so you could really, you could really, like, I Yeah, he loose. was speeding off of her. He's a cheating little squirrely haired little twat mouth cunt motherfucking <laughs> face dick nose. What's wrong with her? He, yeah, he grew up real quick yeah. in that bunkhouse. And he do. knew he was insulated. Like there was no retribution. Especially because then Rip comes in and he kind of has that little, right. you know, he's that whole aura around him. I love it. And I think it's so funny because Rip thinks it's hilarious. Right. right. Which I think is so funny. Anytime you get to see Cole do that kind of comedy work, I think that's so fun. It's so fucking funny back there. <laughs> he's kicking your ass and talking shit at the same time. Hey. The Let's get methodical. What has hurt Jimmy the most? Okay, we start out. We start out with the taser. 
Very first time we meet Jimmy, boom, taser. 15 minutes later, boom, brand. Uh, a little bit after that, Rip kicked me in the butt. Get on the horse, Jimmy. Um, that's about halfway into the first episode of the show so far. How about uh, bear spray? I, what the ah! fuck? I got bear sprayed. In between here and here, I fell off about 15 horses. This is my, my most favorite because it will really give us some insight into you. The pain that a man can only know as a broken heart. Mia. Don't forget Avery leaving before Mia left. Oh, I forgot. Don't forget my he grandfather had... being killed. So broken heart, of course, but you also got broken back. Pelvis. Pelvis. Weenie. Arm. Weenie. Oh, oh wait, we have another one. Sorry, we have an odd uh, that was not on there. This seems silly now. Punched in the face. Yeah, that does seem silly. All right, let's get a ranking system going. For, so so Jimmy's punched in the face, scale. that's least. That's least. Right? That's a that's like a one. So Actually, okay, butt, butt kick butt kick ties for number one, because that butt kick, butt kick, while it was humiliating, while it has a sort of component of humiliation, not quite as painful. Of course, I'd rather take a butt kick. Okay. Taser might be, well, bear spray probably better than the taser. So we'll do number two there. Taser, maybe number three. What about falling off a horse? There's been a series, there's been a lot of different falls off. That's like Do you even feel those? It seems like as soon as you hit, you're unconscious. Fall off, we're gonna say like, you know, that's like four through seven maybe. Brand, I think, is like eight. Uh, there's one that's not listed on here. I'm quite certain that it's number one. Mm. Uh, the pain of disappointing John Dutton. You broke your word to me, Jimmy. Disappointing JD, for a lot of people, that's a fatal injury. What would you say that says? That says... <laughs> says like dish? What yeah, it was gonna say, say disappointing, of, but I got of... distracted. Disappointing JD. Two piece, nice, a lot of people forget that. No, what's real cowboy shit? Having legible penmanship. What about that lady on YouTube who said that my teeth have been getting yellower every season? Where would you say that right? Yellow teeth shame, circle, circle, circle. <laughs> I'm not buying this for the Yellowstone. I'm buying this for me. Jamie buys his own ranch, effectively. I have questions right off the bat. I don't know if Jamie wants to be a landowner no. or wants to be a rancher. I think he wants to get out from under the thumb. It's time you grew your own shadow, son. You stopped living in someone else's. Right away, I'm like, this whole operation's probably doomed. Would you go to work? Would you go to live in that bunkhouse? I wouldn't want to work. I wouldn't want to work there. I would talk to him. I mean, he should talk to the guy, see what the office is. Could you imagine if he walks around, everybody in the bunkhouse is like, hey, I got to. He's poaching. Just, if you want to come in just for a couple hours, and everybody said no. No, I wouldn't and want to he do walked that. away. Just because it's like his personality. Nah, it's like man. you don't know what you're doing. I think I gotta say, I think that like the sheets would have really high thread counts. That's what I was gonna say. It'd like, be kind of nice, sheets. you know? I bet there would be like really good conditioner Probably in the like, communal shower. Be like a loft. I imagine like a loft feel. Yeah. yeah. I think it'd be really lovely. <laughs> really? I can't. Like in downtown Montana. Yeah, because it's not functional in the same way. It's not going to be like covered in all the side effects of working on a ranch. Right, but he would try or... extra hard to make it that way. Like if it was the prison portion of a pirate ship. He'd be like, that's your bunkhouse. But to be fair, I also wouldn't want to work at like Rip's law firm. That sounds interesting. You know, like, Jamie, for me, Jamie's bunkhouse is a little bit like Rip's law firm. I would like that. That would be exciting to me. It's Getting into to court, out. really just throwing it around, seeing what happens. <laughs> hey, Rip! You mean throwing chairs around? Yep. Yeah, Getting mean, into court and really just flipping whatever tables? Whatever goes, like, whatever happens. <laughs> That's Rip. Yeah, yeah, I, whatever happens, I'm gonna happens. represent myself. <laughs> yeah, the judge gives him instructions. Yeah. Hey! You gotta tell your boy to watch the bass in his voice when he speaks to me. In this ranch, you don't litigate. <laughs> If you're gonna you litigate, litigate, you litigate, litigate with me. <laughs> I'm gonna get with you, Argon. You wanna fight somebody, you come fight me. I'll fight you all goddamn day. It has to be something like. It's always names, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it is always names. But Rip only has one name, so it's Rip, Rip, no, and Rip. No, Wheeler and Co. Oh, Rip Wheeler, he's got a. Yeah, he Wheeler does have Co. Yeah. Wheeler and Co. It's the brand, but it's a dollar sign. You know? He's got the big billboards. Yeah, yeah. yeah like have you been like, ripped off? Just call just Rip Wheeler. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I think that's great. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> it's it's so beautifully simple, the, the wedding. When, when I thought, oh, they're going to get married, I was picturing this. And I was like, oh, I'm, Ryan's going to be there. He's going to put a nice shirt on. God damn it, it's going to be great. And I was really looking forward to it. And then I read it, and I'm like, what the 
fuck is this? <laughs> this is not the wedding that I had in. That you had dreamed Where's of. Where's my goddamn wedding? You really <laughs> wanted to wear your tux. Mine's I wanted to tux. be there. Yeah. I wanted a wink from Rip. A little, <laughs> just a, you know, something, some, a nod. And then, you know what? No, no, just nope. I hope you'll let me do this again for you. And do it right. Whatever. Just goes to show. You think Wait, you're going you, this way? You're really going you this got way. An invite to the wedding. Like, would you have come back from the four sixes for a wedding invite? I feel like the bunkhouse would have catered the wedding. Like work release. Like, yeah, exactly. You're here, but you don't look at anybody, and you serve you shrimp. Don't talk to the talent. What would your role be then as a caterer for a rip in Beth wedding? Uh, I'd be schlepping ice. See, I, I was the for wedding. Sure. I'd be the wedding coordinator. Yeah. Oh, you'd be the, the governor of the whole yeah. operation? Yeah. Uh, no, I'd, I'd like to invite you to ice. come, you know, up on the podium. Yeah, like, yeah. You've get, got the Bluetooth yeah, headset. Get the thing, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Flowers, 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 flowers. Exactly, flowers. exactly, exactly yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, getting four bouquets, yeah. and I'm like fumbling. Damn, that was beautiful. They all like that? <laughs> Hell, kid, ain't none of them like that. <laughs> Lloyd Walker, this shit ends here. Fight. Break the rules. We have to go to the arena. It's and like a gladiator it's like, version. Yeah, and fight fair till one guy loses. And that's Casey and Rip, like that's like clearly that was their thing. With this one, you're just kind of like, what is? What are we gonna accomplish with this? You know, because it was almost inhumane. It was. This was like you really didn't even want to watch it. It's like let's not do this. Yeah, we don't anymore. want this. It's like because it's sad. Thank God. So let's imagine that the you know cowboy brawling in the bunkhouse becomes a, a new video game trend. <laughs> Cowboy Fatality! I'm just gonna start out. Walker's Fatality. He sort of hits you, you're kind of dazed. He takes out his guitar. And plays it, strings and plays it. plays an incredibly sad and song. And you, and you sort of, you, your whole life kind of flashes before your eyes and it's sort of an emotional, like he's taking you down Yo, this absolutely. journey. And his band comes in, like a bunch of, you know, a bunch of other people come in and then it plays you out. Or maybe at the end he just gets ever so close and he takes a string off the guitar, leans in for a little kiss and Garrett Wire. And just get out. That would be like his second night. finisher. I think if it was Lloyd's finisher. I think it involves a bucking horse, because he's an old bronc rider. So I think it's like he gets you and puts you on a bucking horse. I and like you that. Get, you get bucked to we'll pieces. We'll call it the bow-legged yeah. buck. The bow-legged buck is his The bow, that's his finisher. Fatality. Yeah, or you, like he calf ropes you, at, you know, around your ankles and you can still sock hop. Yeah. At, but then he looses a bull in yeah. to just toss you. I think that's great. Cowboy poker. What would Ryan's be? I feel like I just pull my boot off and just like whack you with the heel and do like a little dance. Yeah. It's foundational to Ryan that he's both a livestock agent and in the bunkhouse. So there could be like he calls in backup. It's like a, a you see tanks and helicopters. You see lights. Yeah, yeah and the lasers and all yeah. over the place. I like that. Teeters is she's she's cooked up a pot, like a big stew of something deeply foul. Well, dunks your head in it and then you like boil choke. Oh, sure. That would be big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Sunday Colby stew. would kill with a toothpick. Oh yeah, Super or carved, with, yeah. the wooden carving. Carved thing. Jimmy runs away. <laughs> Fight or flight. Flight. Rips, uh, he could have the, the finishing brand where it just doesn't stop. stop. It goes all, oh, all, the, all the way through, all the way That's through. Really all the Beth, like, like, fucks your dad. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Beth makes a phone call. What's up? I'm your new mom. She right. starts with the child and just destroys the child that, from the inside. I'm your new mom, and I, uh, I'm i on the mortgage to your house now, and you don't have a house. Is that all it takes to shake you? You're fucking fired. <laughs>